Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Hello, and welcome to Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. I'm your host, John Johnson. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to write a loving note to your partner. And in that note, I want you to tell your partner why you love them. Or you know what? If you don't write a note, you can tell them in person. But I want you to write a loving note to your partner, something very special, something specifically to them from you, from the heart. And if you haven't done this, give yourself some time. Think about it. Give your answer. And What I also want you to do, and I want you to think about this, is I want you to tell your partner why you love them. Why you love them. And on a separate thing, I want you to explain to your partner how does your relationship with them make your life better. So how does your experience of your significant other make your life better? better. I also want you to think about this. Commit an evening to your partner, do whatever they want to do. If they just want to hang out, if they want a massage, if they just want to watch TV, if if they just, if you want to make love, whatever your partner wants to do, I want you to commit that to them up front and blindly be willing to do what they want to do. Obviously, being their partner, you kind of have an idea of what their boundaries are. They're obviously not going to do something so outrageous that you're not going to be safe. Remember your partners, but what I'm getting you to do, what I want you to consider doing here is being freed up, being open to ideas that your partner has and what they want to do because being available for your partner, that's why you have a relationship. That's where the companionship, that's what it's about. That's where companionship makes a difference because it's not the same thing just to have phone conversations with your friends. When you have a significant other, you want to be able to invest in that person because that's like making a deposit in the bank and it works that way for both of you. So as you do this for your partner, Hey, bring your partner to this podcast, have them listen to it. And this is going to be a mutual appreciation party. So each one of you gets to pick an evening and have that, have that special time and ask your partner or you, if you happen to be the partner and your partner gets to be first up, you also have in your way of being, I want you to write a very special note for your significant other. And what I want to see happen, what I want for you to have is a reconnection, a reunification. It's to reignite that bond. And if you have a great relationship, then even better. But if you've had one and, and you haven't had an opportunity to do this in a long time, because we get distracted, we get busy, we do lots of other things. And sometimes we might take our partner for granted, or they may feel that. So before it gets to a crisis mode where you're doing damage control, Let's learn to take a moment out and to make each other special. And I think the benefits are well worth the effort because as you practice doing this, learning to make each other important, then it really adds significance to the relationship. Okay. So I'm going to pivot to something. And if you have difficulty in having a really good relationship, let's think about some problems. We're, uh, I'm going to do like a therapy session with you now. 
So I'm going to sort of play both roles here, but I'm going to ask you some questions and I want you to think about how they apply to you. Now, if you have had relationships, you know, you've picked partners and they seem to only go so far, you know, the, the commitment thing seems to be a little shady or shaky. You just can't seem to get it dialed in and you keep doing this over and over. Obviously we need to look at why you are choosing the kinds of people that you are choosing to have relationships with, because that is a matter of choice and something to think about is when you recognize that it's not going the way it should, do you hang in there hoping that it's going to change? And why do you do that? You have to ask yourself these questions and, and these answers, if you don't have them, then it's t time to pause and really figure this out because most people just seem to spin their wheels in the mud and do this sort of thing over and over. They pick the same kinds of people with the same kinds of habits, the same kinds of behavior, and they expect something different to happen. It's not, it's practice and you know, pretty much what it's going to be like quite often. What can be the driving indicator for why you make the same choice over and over is look at the individual, the physical appearance. Now, quite often people are really, really attracted to a certain type physical features. Yes, we all have things that we're attracted to, but what happens is if you get hung up on that and it's very easy to get caught in the physical appearance because it's very intoxicating and it makes us look not beyond the physical outside and then really take into consideration what's the quality of the relationship like. For example, if you're the kind of person that likes to be in conversation and let's say you make a phone call and you want a phone call at the end of the day, at least an acknowledgement. But if you get involved with somebody that isn't in the habit of doing that, then your need is not going to be met. And you have to either have a conversation about how that's going to improve and then try it out. But if it's not going to improve, then you don't stay with that kind of situation because it's not going to work out for you. Let's just leave it plain and simple that way. But time and time again, people get themselves into these situations and then they try to change the person that they're with. Now it's a different circumstance when people are growing and acknowledge that they are working on something. You see that there is sort of an oral contract that we're going to work to improve something. But when somebody doesn't make the improvement, when somebody is not making an effort, then those things aren't going to happen. And you really have to be conscious to your choices. I'm going to pick another situation. Let's say you have a person that seemed to have a very difficult time making commitments. And by commitment, I'm talking about to the relationship, to have it grow, to have it move forward. And if you're a person who has been in relationships, and you've decided for yourself that you want something that is more commitment, not so loose and undefined that you can't rely on it, but something in the way that if you call, you have a crisis, you want your significant other. You want that one person to be available for you. Usually that is something that we would expect in a committed relationship. They are making you a priority. So you have to choose someone who has the capacity to do that. Now, again, people have to grow. They have to be given an opportunity and sometimes they get in a relationship with someone and then learn their, where their limitations are. And then in order to, to bump it up, they have to work a little harder, but that is a workable situation. But if you have someone that just refuses to be able to get in the conversation that refuses to get involved, then that's a non-starter. You cannot make them be your partner. You have to decide that this is not the relationship that's going to work for you. Now that could be very difficult again, because I mentioned that very often we are caught up in how somebody looks. They're more attractive than somebody else we've ever been with, or some of these other things that work as part of a smoke screen. But when you get down to the brass taxes of how they're going to operate with you, not how they operate with somebody else, but how they're going to operate with you, then you have to really take into account their actions. 
I'm going to take a break right now and I'm going to pick up with this and we're going to talk about how we can get you in a better relationship. Stay tuned. Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hi there, and welcome back to Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. I'm your host, John Johnson. Now, I've been talking about your relationship choices and how sometimes you get snowballed into thinking you have made a great relationship choice, and it could be because you got real caught up in the exterior, but when it comes to judging those qualities that are going to be long-lasting, the things that you really want, you don't seem to be able to let go of this person or to be able to make the choice, to make the decision to leave it. Well, I've given you a few options in, in terms of how to, to look at it and understanding that certain things are not going to change for you. And far be it for you to try to get a fixer-upper. Now, as that is said, many of us do. Many of us grab somebody who, we you know, they've got a lot of the things that we want, and then we decide we're going to try to change something about them. Now, now that isn't wrong to wish for something like that because – you know, we're taught to to stick with things and we're taught to, to work on things. And I think that's great, but it has, but it only goes so far when it comes to choosing someone, you can either learn to be with them and to be satisfied or learn to move on. And the moving on part can be very difficult because here's the thing that I can tell you. If you've lived long enough and you've seen somebody that you've been with, and they've been a certain way, it didn't work out with you. Then you see them with someone else and it seems like, wow, they've made all of these changes. They've metamorphed into something fantastic and you kind of wish that that was you. It, it sort of makes that longing for, hey, maybe if I just stuck with them. And a man or woman, it, it, it happens in both sexes. And there's nothing wrong with, with having that feeling from time to time. And it's more of a romantic idea. See, I mean, we're, we're romantic. But when you think about how human beings evolve, and where we get our lessons in life and who our examples are, all of this stuff is really a crapshoot. I mean, there are no guarantees. So for that, when you're really looking to decide to be with someone, you kind of have to go with, okay, what do I have right now? What, what's in front of me? And you have to have that desire to want to work on something that is both partners. And if you don't, if you don't both recognize that there's a problem that needs to be fixed, then I mean, where are you going to go with that? There are certain things that are deal breakers. And for instance, I've had situations in which in my own life, I dated someone who was not really emotionally attached to me, but I thought, well, maybe it's just a phase that they were going through. And 
but this person obviously exhibited a lot of emotion, but it wasn't towards me. It was towards other things and other people. And I just kind of felt, well, if I stuck around long enough, then they would see that I'm loyal. So then they would become loyal to me. Look, it didn't work out that way. I wound up being more and more disenchanted with the relationship. And I had to finally make the choice to leave. Now, in hindsight, was that a good decision? It was a good choice for me. So here's the thing that kind of kept me in that relationship longer than it, than, than it probably should have, because I wondered, okay, what was I going to miss after I left that person? Cause you know, when you're with them, you kind of have the, the vantage point of being involved and in, in knowing about what's going on in their life. And you have all of these windows to their life. You're, you're permitted that because you're involved. But once you leave that relationship, you realize that's kind of crossing the line and you don't get that kind of access. So it makes you wonder, okay, what are they doing? Well, you have to kind of put that out of your mind. And if you're a nosy busybody, then you're going to need some help. You're going to need some real help because you're going to need to be distracted. You're going to need to be focused on yourself and not what your ex is doing because that can be mind numbing. And I can tell you stories about people who have stalked their ex. I mean, been in the trees with the binoculars because they just wanted to know what they were doing because they were just were so insecure that their ex must've been cheating on them. And, and in a lot of times, I mean, that's exactly what it was. And, and yeah, I, Believe me, folks, I've talked to lots of people that have had those feelings. And then when they've had the, 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 the curiosity to sort of chase this stuff down and, you know, they found out that the betrayal was there. Did it make them feel any better? No, it didn't. It just validated the fact of, of why they wanted to leave that relationship. So why do I say all that? It was just to, to give you an illustration of sometimes we want to know what that other person is doing. That's why we kind of stick around. But I'm telling you, don't waste your life sticking around for somebody trying to see what the next act is going to be. When that relationship is not going to work for you, leave it. Move on to something else. Figure out what you need. Give yourself time to work on that and then find somebody that's that's more closely aligned to who you are and what you're about. Because here's something else that I've discovered. And when you're in relationships, you obviously learn a lot about yourself if you're paying attention, because we certainly know a lot about the other person. But if you get into a conversation with someone and you're sharing your, your concerns and you're being dismissed for sharing your concerns and they don't want to do anything about it, oftentimes... I would describe that as they have blind spots. They're mean the person that you're talking to. You have your concern. You want to share it with them. Maybe you think they're being overly harsh or maybe they're not really seeing the value of, of who you are in their life. And you try to give examples of that and you just get dismissed. Sometimes the person that you are in love with has blind spots. And it can certainly make it a very difficult existence for you in that relationship. And if they are not open to realizing that they have blind spots, like I said, that is going to be hard on you. Oftentimes we've been in situations in life where people don't want to hear the information coming from us. Maybe there has to be some third party, like say a counselor or therapist or something, you know, they're, they're professionals. They're trained at doing this sort of thing. But what you ultimately hope for is that they are open to your concerns, your input without having to go to a mediator or a third party. I mean, certainly they're out there if you need them, but, but, but I'm really talking about when you're thinking about who matches your sensibilities, your way of loving, your way of being in a relationship, you have to learn these things and learn to weed through them and make decisions, make choices. Sometimes they're hard choices because you may have to leave a relationship that you feel somewhat good about, but their pieces aren't missing and you can't will that person into loving you. It just doesn't work. They have to be, they, they have to do that on their own free will. I'm going to take a break and I'm going to come back and talk about this a little bit more. Stay tuned. 
always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Hello and welcome back to Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. I'm John Johnson. At the end of that last segment, I was talking about blind spots. And just to sort of recap, blind spots, and I describe them as this. If you were having a discussion with your significant other and you're talking about things that really affect you and how you feel about their observation, let's say. Let's say you're there being hypercritical of you and you're trying to point out some things and they just won't see it, but, but, but you know, it's there. I call that a blind spot. It's because they can't see it for whatever reason. They can't see it. Now, sometimes it's a mere annoyance and you can just sort of let it go. But other times it could be deal breakers in a relationship. I had an experience in which I was trying to explain, you know, for my own experience in the relationship, some things that I just thought were kept getting overlooked in terms of their significance, in terms of their importance. And I just could not get my partner to see what I was talking about. And it's because she argued with her own point of view, which sort of nullified in her mind, it nullified everything that I was saying. And I said, they can't possibly be true. I had actually gone to a, a counselor and had really discussed this in depth to say, what am I missing here? And I certainly was very invested in the relationship. So I was really trying to make a good faith effort in trying to stay with it. But my therapist pointed out, Hey, you know, she has a blind spot and she just won't see it. And I'll tell you why it was critical. It, for me being in the relationship, wasn't the problem, but for her, she was making it a deal breaker. And it had to do with the family issue about how much time I had devoted to family. And she felt like she was not being considered. And what I would, what I was thinking from my point of view was that if I'm devoted to family, I would be just as devoted to her. And I had given a number of illustrations as to explain how committed I was. Well, she nullified all of that with her explanation. And I said, that's, that's just not right. It's just not fair. Well, it obviously didn't go further than that because from her point of view, it, it, it didn't measure up. It didn't add up and I couldn't get her to see it. Well, this was a situation where I had to walk away from because I didn't see it wasn't worth upsetting her anymore and me putting more effort into trying to convince her because some people just dig their heels in. And from my own point of view, I'm, I, I don't feel like I was being selfish, but I was really trying to see how far this thing could go without it going off the rails. And by that point it had, there was no amount of explaining that I could do. I was just at a point that it was either my family or her. And I said, and when I say family, what I was talking about is I was the person who was responsible for uh, the well being of others. I'm sort of like the, the, the patriarch of the family. My mom had passed away and that had left other people behind me 
that I would therefore commit a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of love, but no less love to my partner because whenever she had a need, I was there. At least I felt I was, but she didn't. So that in and of itself, that that's the story. And I don't have a whole lot more time to go into some details, but explaining it that way, I hope you understand that when I was trying to share with her, how I felt, how committed I was, she didn't agree. And I said, that has to be a blind spot, but she had her opinion and it can go no further. And this is the same sort of thing that I think affects a lot of people when they get into their relationships and they're trying to explain a point of view and the other person just won't see it. Oftentimes it's a blind spot. It's, and it's not one of those things where we can just agree to disagree because that we've already crossed that threshold that happens in things that are a lot less significant things that are, are more minor in terms of their impact. But something like this really affects the quality of the relationship because she felt she could not be more committed to me with the feeling that she had. And I was trying to get more out of this relationship in order to be more committed. So, okay, now I've explained that. So let me go a little further in talking about if you happen to be picking people who don't seem to be committed, because we have this word and, and we use it as called commitment phobic. A lot of women have complained that guys are commitment phobic. And I'm, I'm just using that particular um, dynamic because it just for the illustration, I mean, it doesn't matter who your partner is. You can be a guy having it that way. And you could be two women having a relationship that two guys having a relationship this way. It's just for the sake of explanation. If you have somebody who you feel is commitment phobic, you might really look into, do they try to be in the relationship? And when you're talking commitment, what are we saying? They won't commit to marriage. They won't commit to going out on a date next week. They won't make plans. You know, what we, you know, what are we talking about here? And one of the things that I've discovered in a lot of my conversations with people is oftentimes people who seem to be commitment phobic, they are afraid of vulnerability because at some place or several places in their life, they have been betrayed or impossible or maybe abused. And I mean, psychologically, but it makes them very afraid of going any further because if they commit any more than they already have, because they, they don't trust they, they're never generally comfortable with assurances from people because people have constantly let them down. So if you are dealing with somebody who seems to be afraid of commitment, you might get into a conversation about something like, um, have you been in relationships with people that have constantly let you down or, and, and it could be a lot of reasons why that maybe their expectations were too high and, and people overcommitted and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's, it's, that can be whittled down, but we have to deal with their perception of being let down and then dealing with the disappointment. Because as you know, when you are disappointed about something, you are let down emotionally, it, it crushes you. And then you have to reconnect. You have to pull yourself back together, get back up on that horse, so to speak, and then continue on with life. Well, when these types of things happen over and over and over again, it makes you not want to trust people makes you not want to commit to anything because you can't rely on it. And it in and of itself can create a blind spot when you might say, luck up and run into somebody who wants to be in your life, who is very capable of being honorable and keeping commitments and things like that. Now that having been said, no one is 100% reliable. We are human beings. We make mistakes. We are fallible. But what I'm talking about in, in terms of making commitments is somebody who reasonably wants to be in a relationship with you, who wants to be part of your life and really tries and is making the effort as opposed to someone who doesn't try somebody who isn't reliable and is maybe just tells stories all the time, just lies. Okay. Uh, and somebody who's a liar, you can't be in a committed relationship with because you never know 
what they're going to say or what they're going to do. And clearly, actions speak. That's very important to remember. Actions speak louder than words. And it's one thing to say the words, but when you put actions behind them, then we can say that somebody is not only making the effort, but they're coming through. And I say, give deference to the person who's really trying to make an effort because people that love you will definitely try. And I think it's important for you to recognize the effort that they're making. Because I say, if you, if you're not failing, then you're not trying hard enough. If you don't fail, it means you're not trying hard enough, hard enough to make a difference, pushing the boundaries, pushing the limits, doing the best that you can do. Because when you're pushing that limit at some point, you are going to bump up against your limit and you're going to fail. But in a good way you learn and then you pick up, you learn to push the boundaries again. And when it comes to relationships, somebody loves you and you know, love can make you do things you never thought you could do. That's the wonderful thing about love and consider that when people are trying to be in your life, want to be in your life, want to make a difference as opposed to those who don't. So I want to get you into a relationship that you can really invest in. And I want you to figure out what's important to you. Make your list, talk to your significant other. If you have one, or if you want to find one, make a list, have conversations about that. Be believable and listen to their answers. When they ask, when you ask your questions, make that part of something that you do and you can have a wonderful relationship. I'm John Johnson. This is the golden state media concepts relationships podcast. And I want to thank you for listening.